Some brand new developments in the murders of a mother and her two young sons found dead in their Illinois home. Sherry Coleman, her 11-year-old Gavin, and 9-year-old Garrett all murdered. Police are investigating now the relationship that Sherry's husband and the boy's father, Chris Coleman, may have had with a woman in Florida. Detectives traveling to Key Largo to interview her. Joining us now, Nicholas Pister, a reporter with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch who has broken an awful lot of interesting details on this story. Nicholas, uh, we don't have to name names here, but who is this woman? What is the relationship to the case? Uh, she's a woman living in Largo, Florida. Uh, she's worked in several different locations throughout the uh, area of Florida. She had some sort of uh, relationship. She's a, uh, a friend of Sherry Coleman's and then developed... They went to high school together, right? They went to high school together and then they developed a... Uh, a relationship with Sherry's husband, Chris. And what is it uh, that, that ties him to this Florida woman, do you know? Well, again, uh, you know, we're reporting that she was his girlfriend. That, that's what the police uh, sources are telling us, and that police went down there almost immediately after the, uh, the bodies were discovered to interview this woman and to figure out more about the relationship. Right, and just so our viewers don't get confused, we had some um, uh, images on screen there. Those are uh, pictures of Sherry Coleman, uh, the deceased in this case. And you say that there are uh, text messages and apparently phone calls that passed between Chris Coleman and this woman in Florida, right? Uh, we know that they're investigating all of that. Mm -hmm. We know that that's what the extent of the investigation is. He has hired a pair of criminal attorneys, I know. Uh, obviously, they're keeping him under wraps as much as possible, but you say that the indications are that police are paying him an awful lot of attention these days. Yeah, there, there seems, you know, I, I was down in the area where he's living with his parents in Chester, Illinois, which is about an hour south of St. Louis, and there is a lot of activity around his house, around the church where his father's a pastor. Uh, there continues to be a heavy police presence down in that area. Has he been going to work? We mentioned that he uh, used to work, or, you know, up until these killings happened, he was in charge of or involved in security for the Joyce Meyer Ministries, right? Yeah, and that's, that's where he worked. There's no indication that he's been back there since the, the murders, but we do know that uh, neighbors had reported that Joyce Meyer visited the scene shortly after Chris Coleman had come home when the bodies were discovered. And Sherry, his his late wife, she was uh, a volunteer for the ministries. She didn't actually work there. Uh, yeah, we're not exactly sure what her relationship was to the ministry, but yeah, she was uh, close to it. Uh, neighbors told you that that uh, police said these three had been strangled. Generally, any time. Uh, you know, in my years of covering crimes, police would always say whenever there is a strangulation murder, that is very personal. It's not somebody who, um, it's usually somebody who knew the victims personally uh, and, and, you know, doesn't resort to a, using a gun or something like that where you kill from a distance. It becomes very personal. Have they talked about that with you? No, they haven't. They have talked very little about the cause of death or, you know, what they believe was behind how the bodies were killed. But they are saying that they are making good progress in this case. It they're saying like. that they're making progress and that, you know, they have every reason to believe that they're going to make an arrest. Hmm. I'm sure you'll be uh, bringing us news of that uh, when it does happen. Nicholas Pister, thanks very much for being with us.